All right, everybody, uh, as you are joining, I'd like to welcome you all to today's uh, online workshop. Um, if you would like to enable your video, you're more than welcome to. If you would like us to, to see you, you can also leave it disabled if you would like to. That's totally fine. I know sometimes folks like to join these and just kind of hang out and watch them. Um, but if you would like to enable your video, you can do. We, we default to disabling video and disabling audio for um for these online workshops <clears throat> but uh, it's so that it's up to you if you would like to enable your video um, as you join so while you're joining um i'd like to invite everybody to share maybe where they are joining us from in the world um this is the first time i think that i've helped co-host a a midday this is my midday but i know for for my other co-hosts it's quite late in the day but this is the first time I've hosted one in the middle of my day. So I'm always interested to see where folks are from. So I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, and my fellow host today, Lax, has mentioned he's coming in from India. So uh, remind me again, Lax, where did you say you're from originally? Yeah, India. Yes. India. Okay, Perfect. cool. Uh, so if you'd like to let us know where you're from today, you're welcome to share that in the chat. Uh, you're welcome to unmute and share that with us. But it's always cool to know sort of whereabouts everybody is in the world and maybe what time of day it is for you. Um, we've got Rainer from Germany. We've got Rico from Switzerland. Hi, Rico. I chatted to Rico yesterday. We've got James from Philly in the USA. Uh, Matt from uh, Pennsylvania in the USA, which is quite early there, I guess. Uh, welcome, Kazuto from Okinawa, Japan. Uh, we've got Ken from O'Fallon um, in the USA. Matt says it's 8 a.m. here. Oh, okay, so it's not too early. <laughs> Sort of first thing, cup of coffee, catch an online workshop. Uh, Rich is in Garden Grove, California. It's 5 a.m. for Rich, so Rich is quite early. Uh, Elliot is from uh, the UK in Cheltenham. That's 1 p.m. there. So this is a lunch lunch uh, session for for Elliot. Got Kimberly from Milwaukee. Wow, we've got folks from all over. Um, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, and then I saw uh, Ronnie has joined us as well today. John says 7 a.m. in Chicago. Okay, so we've got some folks who are up super early. We've got some folks having a lunchtime here. We've got folks who are later in the day. Um, this is this is very, very cool. All right. Um, so <clears throat> I think that everybody who wants to join has probably joined by now. So I think it's safe to sort of start getting going with this. Um, I'll just keep keeping an eye. Oh, we've got some, we've got some folks coming in now. Um, so I'd like to get started just by introducing myself and my, my fellow host here today. So my name is Jonathan. Um, if you don't know me, uh, I am a sponsored contributor to the training team. Um, I create uh, educational lessons, uh, online workshops, uh, various other things for Learn WordPress. Um, and I'm joined today by Lax. Uh, Lax is going to be is going to be handling most of the online workshop today. Lax is going to be taking us through what it would take to build your own uh, online, uh, sorry, your own contact form plugin. So Lax, maybe you'd like to give us a quick introduction as to yourself, a little bit of background, a little bit of your bio and who you are. Oh, hi. Um, am I audible, right? Say again? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, good to see uh, folks from all around the world. Uh, it's kind of my first workshop, per se, for Learn WordPress. Uh, I am Lax. I'm from uh, South India. Uh, I'm a web developer. I'm mainly focusing on WordPress. For, since 2010, I think I'm working only on uh, WordPress and most part. So it's good to be here with you all and especially with Jonathan. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm going to set up a couple of ground rules before we get started. So I chatted to Lax before we started today's session. We chatted yesterday and he is very open to allow this to be a very free flowing session. So if you have questions, please feel free to, to, to ask them as we go along. Uh, you're welcome to ask them in the chat. You're also welcome to unmute and ask questions if you have any. Um, if there's anything you're not sure of, if there's anything you're struggling with, then you're welcome to ask questions at any time. I will be keeping an eye on the chat as much as possible um, to make sure that we don't miss any questions and I'll, I'll break and stop us if we need to. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to be handing over to Lax. He's going to be taking us through everything here today. Uh, so Lax, if you would like to take it away. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. It will have like hardly six, seven slides. I don't like too much slides. So let's go over it. More theory than talking. So sorry, more practical sure. than theory. Let's go. Uh, 
I'll be sharing this one. Yeah, so I hope you are able to see this one, right? So today we will be uh, discussing about how to create your own contact form plugin. So why uh, start with a contact form plugin? Because it's kind of easier or way to learn so many other concepts related to WordPress. You could just display some post types, display some content, but you might be doing it uh, without a plugin as well. You, you have a lot of blocks for doing it. So you don't have to do any custom code with it. So as a developer, you want to get started with it, not just in PHP and WordPress for anything. Form handling is a good way to start. So that way you know how to uh, sanitize, validate, and store the information and also display the information. So let's get started. So I'm Lax, a web developer, who are mostly working on WordPress. So if you have any questions even now, after the stuff as well, we can all stay connected in the all social media. It's the same Lax Mario, and you can find me. Okay, so here's the agenda. So hopefully, I hope we'll get something out of it today. So just understand how WordPress the plugins work. Uh, what are the minimum stuff that we need for a plugin? And then create a simple form when we will be using it, rendering through a short code. Uh, why short code? Why not a page template? Uh, it could be a block. All the discussions here, they are coming in uh, just be, uh, in a few minutes. And then how to handle the submission. So we have a plugin, it shows the form and users can submit it. And what do we do with the data? You can display just a success message. Uh, or you can store it to the database, store it as a post type. Or you can send an email to the site admin. Hey, we got somebody uh, who left a new message. So all that stuff. So that's what we're uh, hoping to cover. Um, I, I break it down into mostly uh, beginner friendly, hopefully. Uh, when you start with, let's say, we're just starting with PHP and WordPress, hopefully you can make something out of it. That's the so many hopes already. As I said that six or seven times. Seven. Okay, so here are some screenshots for folks because you might be uh, guessing what is going to be. So go with the teaser at least. So here is you have a form. You can activate it, adding a short code. So I hope. Uh, all of you are all familiar with uh, what is the short code in reports. If it's not, we can discuss that as well. So we are adding a code and it's going to render the form. So this is how it will render in the front end. And then with this one, users can able to submit. Once they submit, you can see a message like this. And this is what we are aiming to cover today. And if, if time permits, we can also see how to save this as a post type in the database. Uh, here's the source code of this one. Uh, if you all want to follow uh, along with it, you, you're more welcome to do so. Or if you are into, hey, I want to see the code ahead, uh, can go to this repo and see it. Uh, John, can you also share this one if anyone wants? Yeah, John will be sharing it as well. Then uh, some rest of references. So you, you will get access to the slides and also the code and stuff. Okay, let's thank you already. Let's go. Let's go back to the code, right? So are you all able to see the screen and the font, everything is okay, or we want to increase the font size or really so okay. So before we get more Sorry, just before uh, we before we go, yeah. so if anybody can't see the screen, let us know. Um either yeah. in the chat or via mic, but if you can see it, then we should be good to go. I think everybody looks good. Yeah, looks like we're good. Okay. So uh, not just in WordPress, there are hooks. It's a common stuff. Uh, hook, you can consider it as a event. So why we start with the hooks? Because we are using sharp code and we are using, uh, we will be adding styles and we will be handling the form submission. Everything relies on hooks. So to put it simple, uh, you can consider this analogy. Uh, you are in a, a cafe, 
So barista comes in and is going to start making coffee. And if the user wants it to, uh, sorry, uh, customer in this case. So if a customer wants it to be, I want it to be more sweet, uh, add more sugar. So we can uh, consider that as a filter. So it's the same coffee, but when it, he is going to serve, the barista is going to maybe add more sugar. In. So that's a filtering. So like here, you can see attaching an action to the event. So an event can be user submitting a comment, user registering to the site, and things like that. It can be an event, or when the header loads or the footer loads, that's an event. And what do you want to do with it? You want to attach something to it. Hey, when the footer loads, show me this map as well. When the footer loads, do this extra stuff. That's an action. But you want it to be filtering it. Uh, for example, when the content loads, I want this specific thing to be removed, hidden, or I want this thing to be modified and changed. Then you can use a filter. So for this one, we are not using a filter, but still it's good to know. So this is like a prep work. So does anybody have any questions about uh, how, a, how it's an action, how this works? So I don't, I don't have a question, but I just want to say I really like your analogy. Um, yeah. As somebody who enjoys <laughs> drinking coffee, I like the way you put this together as, a, as an example. <laughs> yeah, came up with different stuff, but then stick with the coffees. It's more <laughs> resonates with everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can see here, uh, let's start with adding an action. So when you have add action, here uh, the first argument is... Uh, Let's say that's the WordPress way of it. Like it could be any initializing a plugin, initializing the uh, admin. It can be an admin hook, only runs on the admin. It can be a header, footer, or any other hook. That's um, every hook has a specific purpose. So that's the first one. First argument is always about WordPress itself. You cannot change it. You have to just use what it is. But the second one is something that you can do uh, you can change and you can add a prefix to it. You can you are free to use whatever you want. It's just a callback. So callback in the sense, for example, you leave a comment. I'm not looking at the chat now. So if you leave a comment, John will call me back. So it's like uh, there is a you are calling this action. Hey, load this one or do this one. So I'm you are just chatting. You're doing something. So there is an event happening, and that event is going to call something back. So while this event happens, and this will also happen. So if you add a, leave a chat uh, message, John is going to read it, and he's going to call me back. It's like you're not directly accessing me, but still there is a way like it's going to reach me in a way. So that's how uh, action books work. And just uh, call back. It's like if you are, I hope you are using JavaScript, Python, or some other language as well. It's the same, yeah, a simple method. and uh, Call by function name and just whatever you want. You can render it, display it, save it, or any other stuff. You can do an email, all the you can do almost anything with the callback. The one thing a catch with WordPress, the way it works, is the ordering, the priority. Some hooks you, you might be expecting it to run, but it doesn't. Because maybe uh, in the order of it running, WordPress may might have skipped it. For example, if your user is signing up, and you want it to be uh, checking their username, you have a username book. It may not work when you initialize the thing, right? Because WordPress, the, the site just loaded. You can check only when the username data is available. You cannot check it before something is available, right? So something like that. So that's when you add an action, if it doesn't work, you can check your priority or you might be want to use a different book. So right now uh, with all the AI stuff and tools included, and also some WordPress specific extensions for your code editor. By the way, I am using VS Code, and I have I I use PHP PHP Storm all every day, but I'm using VS Code for this workshop. So because many developers like it and it's easy to use, so let's go with the VS Code. So all right, just the prep work is done. Uh, if you still have any questions, just feel free to ask. Let's go and create our plugin. So to create a plugin, you can just use a file. I like this one, index.php, you can just add a file. Uh, but 
it's better to have a folder. So that way, if you want to add more files in it, you can organize it better. So you start with a folder. So uh, let's create, I don't know why it's just creating somewhere here. Let's create, yeah, create a folder. I'm going to call it, um, let's see, WP contact form. So I have a folder and now I'm going to add a plugin file. So it could be anything. It doesn't have to be the same prefix, but it's better if you follow the same prefix, just in case uh, if you are creating more plugins and stuff, uh, I would say it might get confusing. For example, you might, uh, let's say a contact form or for something else. If you just name them as form, it should not be a problem with the, within the folder, but if you are not using the folder and stuff, and it's also a better practice, it's a personal personal preference. John, correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm just uh, going with the prefixed one. So you can choose whatever prefix you want. Uh, for example, if you are having your own agency, you can add your agency prefix there. Or if you are working for a client, let's say the client is... Um, uh, let's say ABC company. So you can add ABC in, in it. So in future, you will know, oh, okay, this is the one that I created for this company for this specific project. That way it's getting more easier. Let's go to the PHP. And in the resources, you can find uh, Jonathan's, uh, sorry, I called you John or is John uh, earlier? Maybe that's what. Shocking for him. That's fine. John, everybody knows me as John, so I have no problem with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just start with the PHP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. That's the uh, autocomplete. It's, uh, sometimes AI just assumes too many things. So, uh, okay. So we're going to add the uh, plugin headers. Uh, Jonathan has a good a video or oh, sorry, good workshop about hooks and also creating your first plugin. So you can watch that as well. So it just guesses by the name of it, but we'll just go here. I just have the name and even with the name, you are able to, uh, example, let's go to the installed plugins. Now you can see the plugin there already. So you can activate it. It's not going to do anything. So that's how WordPress works. WordPress just expects the plugin header, just the name, that's enough. But it's good to have more details, like which plug PHP version you want, which WordPress version it should be, and your author name and, and stuff as well. And since this is like a more of a development related stuff, it's not like production ready or you're not creating it and selling it to a customer. It's uh, just we are adding some dummy random data here. Um, Let's say description, call it version 1.0. Author is John. I think it's now AI can hear you as well. So let's say author. Your AI, your AI tool knows me. <laughs> yeah. It's Codium. It's free. If you anybody's little interested, you can try it. You don't have to pay for it. And before you try any tool, make sure to check your terms of uh, privacy and other stuff as well. Since uh, uh, whatever license I usually use a mighty license and so a main thing I'm uh, another thing is like if we want to translate it we need this text domain so let's go with it and then uh, we are not going to have the languages so I'm going to skip that part but can add uh, I didn't add the plugin URL. Yeah, it just assumes it. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it as it is, plugin URI, and then the requires. So I'm saying at least uh, 5.8 up, a WordPress 5.8 version, and then PHP version as well. So if you are uh, want to use any advanced functions like string contains, I mean this one, 
SPR content, some people might pronounce it. So this is a PHP 8 method. It may not be available with this. So accordingly, whatever uh, stuff you want to use, let's go with it. Like you can, let's say 8, it's fine. If I O, it might, whatever the version you want to use. So this is plugin headers. If you can say that like a step one here to here, now refresh it. And you can see, uh, now where it's just, yeah. Now you can see it has more details, the author names and the plugin site and everything. And let's go ahead and add some more uh, stuff. If you are using WordPress, what's your favorite constant? And for me, this one. So I'm going to exit if this constant is not defined, right? So constants are constant as the name suggests. It's like they are the constant in they are going to change. And WordPress has a lot of constant. And this is being defined at somewhere in WordPress code. So we are checking if this uh, plugin or this code is being executed outside WordPress. It says some, someone else is trying to access your stuff. So that way we check if it is defined. If not, we're going to exit. You can, this is a common line. You can see that in all the uh, plugins. It's good to have it. You don't have to right now. We are just developing it. You can, you don't even need this one, but it's, it's required. It's always a, a good place to start. Okay, now let's uh, go back to our uh, Agenda or plan for today. We want to have a, a plugin. And right now we have the skeleton of it. And we want to add the form. And we choose short code. Uh, then why uh, it's short code in the sense the short codes are easier. You can overround them. You can use it anywhere. You can use it in the blog. If you are using classic theme or hybrid theme, you can still use them. Or if you want to render it somewhere else programmatically, you can still do that. Like do short code or a short code will still work. So using a short code makes sense. Uh, since we are, this is our, going to be our first plugin. Even if you've created a few, that's like the short code is a uh, better way to get started. In future, once you're comfortable with this, you can uh, convert it into a page template, which is kind of more not required because page template is restricted or limited. Instead, you can convert it as a block. So right now, if you are using short codes, you can convert them as a block. If you are uh, saying like, hey, I'm comfortable with short codes, what should I do next? Then I, I think I would recommend go and create some blocks. So everywhere, there are blocks everywhere now. Okay. Uh, we Before we move on to the next step, I want to add a, empty index file so this is to prevent direct listing uh, so if you are a shared hosting now uh, yeah i pick up the silence with golden now okay so if you are on a shared hosting somebody goes to this like wp content uh, slash plugins folder, they could able to see what the plugin files are and stuff. So there is a chance of some, it's a vulnerability. So if you just to avoid it, have this one in your theme and everything. Uh, when you create a plugin, just takes a couple of seconds, just create a MD file. And it's also good to have a readme text or readme uh, markdown file, whatever you prefer. For the sake of simplicity right now, I don't, we don't need it. Just uh, these two are fine. And let's add the shark code here. Going to add shark code. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so AI yeah, yeah, auto completes it. It is not start well. So hopefully, still, you, you are, it's my seventh time saying hopefully. Now it's eighth. Okay, so uh, you see. We are just adding a short code. When the short code is called, this will be the call back. So we are going to add this in the editor. When it, in the Gutenberg or in the classic editor, we are going to add it, add this short code, and this will be called. So to make things easier to reference, we want to add some comments here. 
uh, it's had the shot go. Add this to editor to render the font error. Okay, now let's go and add the function. Uh, function is a function, then let's let's add some description. Dot blocks shot for the blog and since our version 1.1 okay 1.0 so let's go here and first just display something uh quickly echo oh god that's why it renders it, it adds too many unnecessary stuff so let's just add something here Let's just say hello and let's try it quickly i make a common mistake i'm going to make it now and see let's show you all from um, and i'm going to add a short code oops where is it let's go here Copy the shot code. Let's yeah, pasting it. And it's not rendering. Can anybody say why? Yeah, because the plugin is not yet activated. I often do that when I even when I create blocks, like I do this, I step all the blocks and I, I often forget and I do wondering that all the time. Exist. Yeah, no wondering <laughs> my existence. Am I really a developer? <laughs> doing so, it's still yeah, it's print somewhere here. You can see the hello on, on top of the page somewhere here. So uh, let's let's proceed. Uh, the stuff. Uh, so you can see when you. Uh, render the when you print something through shot code, it's going to print on top of the page. Because to avoid that, we are going to use the output buffering. Uh, that's a common way to use in, in PHP. Output buffering start. So it's going to store this information, whatever we want to print. So the instead of printing it on the, the page, it's going to store it and we are going to return it. So this return statement will print this one. So right now, now you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see, it's on the top of the page. Um, it's printing somewhere uh, right away where, where the page starts, but we want it to be inside the content, right? So with output buffering, it will be printed on the content. Okay, so now that's it. Let's add a form here. Uh, let it be there. Mm -hmm. One, two, add line breaks. And then going to add the form. This is old way of doing things. I started in 2008, nine times, so if, if you prefer just concatenating strings or you want to just use, you can even, let's go this way. This is not, this looks more dirty. Let's go with the little cleaner approach. So you can end the PHP there and now we can print HTML here. So let's wrap it in a div, add a class and close it. Now add the form. Uh, I'll uh, want to type everything here. I'll just copy and paste to make it a little bit faster so that way we can discuss something else while well, up typing this one. 
Okay. Yeah, what is missing is submit button. So we can add the non field later. Yeah, we have a submit button. And we can also add a name to it. So we can check it. Yeah, okay. Let's look the form. So what we did so far, we added a chat code. And it uh, starts the output buffering when we are adding the fields. And here, I'm just adding HTML required attribute just to simplify the validation for now. This is not foolproof. It's not recommended for production. Uh, you have to still validate it on the server side. But for sake of it, let's go. Oh. It doesn't look good. It doesn't. It, it looks more weird than I thought. Okay, let's just now. For now, at least we have a form. Uh, see if we are able to submit it. Uh, and it's as so submit before, team of validation. <laughs> before we carry on, there was a question in the chat that I think is going to be an interesting one to discuss. Sure. Um, Elliot says, "Do you need to escape output via a shortcut action when using Echo?" Uh, which one? So, yeah. Elliot, maybe, maybe, Elliot, maybe you want to unmute and and maybe dive into your question a bit further. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Hi, Elliot. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Lax. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The, I think previously, before you added the HTML, there was an echo. Um. Yeah. 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 So I just wondered whether. The, if you use the add shortcode action, whether you do you need to escape echo the echo function, or does the action hook or the add shortcode take care of all of the um, escape? Because I'm not I can't can't remember how it quite worked, but yeah, um, it's an interesting thing. I, I haven't tried that one as well because uh, uh, you are uh, saying about the uh, sanitizing part, right? The escaping like. If I have HTML entities or something else, the script tag and stuff, whether it's going to escape or how it's going to work. All right. Yeah. If you if you directly echo a string, do you do you not need to escape it when you use the add short code? Yeah. Function? Typically, I, I I used to uh, use it. Yeah, yeah. Sanitize it. Escape if it is an attribute. Escape attribute or escape HTML and stuff. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much anywhere. Short codes. Any any time you're you know echoing something, you need to escape it. But in this case, for example, um, it's for example when when Lax early on he had the the HTML in a string, yeah, um, yeah. and and that string he controlled, so you don't need to escape that because that's a hard coded string. But if the attribute was maybe stored somewhere in the database from somewhere else, then you then you have no control necessarily, full control over that variable. Then you would need to escape that. Uh, but if you're just hard coding a string like the way the way Lax had coded earlier, where he was you know doing sort of echo and then a a, um, a string HTML element, you don't have to escape that because you control that piece of text. Uh, it's only if you had variables that you were implementing in that string then you would need to escape those. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's directly from the code rather than being pulled from somewhere else. And e then... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Thanks. It's a nice question. Because I haven't tried that one with chat codes <laughs> yet, how that's going to work. I used to use it for, let's say, the plugin validation with user mm. editors and other stuff, or for translation and stuff. Yeah, nice. Okay, uh, let's see. I was trying to submit this one, right? Let's see what it happens. Like, that's something, at least we didn't get any error, because we didn't process the data. We just have a form and we are able to submit it. Uh, let's add some styles quickly or, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, another hopefully. Okay, uh, should not take much time with this one. Let's add a folder maybe, or yeah, folder would be nice. New folder, let's say CSS, and the folder, add a file, uh, CSS, and just add some minimal styles. That's the our class here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I'm going with this one because I'm a back end guy. It's still 
this size doesn't look in, doesn't do any harm. Uh, okay. No, it's not this button I want, but um, I'm going to say input and type it equals summit. Okay. I don't want this forward effect or anything that's not necessary. So now I, I've added some styles uh, thanks to Codium. Okay, so let's enqueue it so that way you know uh, adding a style is because, well, any plugin you might create, you will definitely uh, want to add some style, right? And you, I always wish it, we could write this as enqueue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's there's probably a way you could do that where if you use like it's something like text expander uh yeah. or there's a there's an open source one that i'm using called espanso then you could yeah. you could create your own that's actually a really good idea <laughs> yeah okay uh so i'm prefixing most of them as wp underscore learn we, you, you can prefix whatever it is. Another way is you can use namespaces, which just for a little bit of simplicity, you can um, uh, avoiding it. It's still, it's still a good practice to namespace your stuff. Uh, so now we have the action, like the from the analogy, it's like the barista so open the door and it starts making coffee, the callback. Let's go here, add some function. What's this? Right. Yeah, so this is uh, probably you might have already used this one as a common uh, stuff when, when you are using theme or child theme. So we are adding a name, giving it a name, and uh, I prefer plugin directory URL, that one. So with the version, version number helps you to, uh, let's say you uh, you are revalidating this one, like the cache busting is going to help if you are releasing something. So that way users will get the new style because it's going to have, it's going to append the, and the query string will have the version number. So that it's going to help. Let's see how the style is applied. Okay. Yeah, we got the styles applied, and now let's see the page source quickly. Where it is in what happened to our style that we added? Hello, are you here? Still here? Yeah, the font style.css and the version is got applied here. The other one, don't mind it because I have another plugin activated. It's the same. Uh, Nice, let's go here. Uh, let's deactivate the other one, so that way other style will not get applied. The prefix is different though, so that way you can see. Nice, so we got the form, address and style. Let's process the data. Um, I'm wondering how this actually, maybe because of the existing code, it pulls up, okay. Uh, so in the WordPress action itself, we are just attaching our callback. We want to see if the form is actually submitted. So uh, just in the old days of PHP, we want to just say, if the submit button is clicked, we can do something. Let's print it, print. And this is for debugging purposes. Let's make it quick. Why it says return? Uh, okay. So when you submit, it's going to print, and maybe I should, I want to die. It's, no, I don't want to die, but I said that it's script to die. Let's go. Uh, let's it's one of my die. one of my favorite functions in PHP is the die function. <laughs> yeah. Drupal has the dump and die. And, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, say it comes something. And, whoa, what happened? 
we have the action, we have the call and the submission. If the post is some summit, yeah, it should work. So your just go back to your code quickly, Lux. Yeah. Your your conditional is saying if not post submit. If not, mm. is it? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, so here we, go. we have the data, we are now accessing it through the callback. So instead of just printing it here, uh, we could send an email, we can do all the other processing here. Let's just try to display it on the content itself. Like so when somebody submits a form, uh, let's try to display a message or display it on the top of the page itself. Um, so for that, I'm going to add an action uh, content filter action. You can uh, try whatever uh, other stuff as well. And then uh, say, this could be the callback. And then display data uh, um, okay let's go here yeah so if we do this one it's going to just render but we need to let's try it so that way it has some one more use case to it. Probably I should not have too many fields here. <laughs> so you can see the content is lost. Now we lost our form and it's showing somewhere else. So to avoid it, we need to actually append the data here. So we're going to get the, get the content. Let's say return it appended with the content. So now let's just refresh so that the data is already here. So I'm going to refresh. You can see the form is submitted and the user gets the message. Yeah. So so far, we are here. You can actually, uh, you can also render if you want to render. You see in some forms, especially on government site all over the world, you can see when you enter some stuff, they're going to say, hey, uh, you want to confirm like a uh, uh, user's way of uh, checking it before submitting the actual form. You want to edit any data and things like that. So you can also render all the fields here. So the, that way the user can able to see what are the values uh, here? Okay, I think covered a little bit. So another uh, hopefully so you've got something out of it. It's like you can, this is, let's deactivate this plugin and activate the another finished one and see the other example. So for example, if you go to this page, that's the form. And when you enter the data, you can see the, form entries here as well. So the code for this one is, is shared and take a look. And this is not the best or the right way to, uh, I'd say one of the right ways, but it's not the only way to do it. There are many ways you can uh, you know, do this stuff. You can approach it. I've just created a contact uh, custom post type. You can do other ways as well. If you have any questions, any comments and then stuff, you can uh, discuss it for a while. What I what I love about building a form plugin is it covers so many different aspects of not only WordPress, but also just generally how the web works. Um, yeah. So you learn, you learn how to process a request, you know, how to submit a request, you learn how a form gets built. Um, as you say, you can just show a message and send an email. 
Um, you can save it to the database. You can save it to a custom post type. You could save it to a custom table. Um, I, I I fully agree with what you said when you first started, Lax. If you want to build plugins, building a form plugin, even though there are thousands of form plugins out there already, but building your own form plugin is a very good place to start because it covers so many different aspects. As you're doing now, you're doing the email thing. Um, so yeah. it's very, very cool. Um, Hugo says, is the recording going to be available later? I missed the first 10 minutes due to technical issues. Uh, yes, Hugo, we will be. We are recording this and this will be available later. It'll get uploaded to WordPress TV probably sometime during the course of the day tomorrow. Um, and then it should be available on YouTube as well on the WordPress YouTube channel. Um, so I will I will make sure that gets uploaded and I'll share the links in the meetup comments. So we are recording it and it will be it will be available. Uh, Lax, you want to tell us what you're doing now? This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just trying to sanitize the data. Um, so this is something uh, which I learned uh, while preparing for this one because I don't I don't usually use this sanitized text text area field. I don't know this one exists. Like but the good thing about WordPress is that so many Easter eggs you have to find. You don't know so many uh, stuff. I was using. Uh, I just have a, my own version of stripping the html stuff the, so i just use it it's going to maybe probably i might have this uh, in one of the classes i have a validation class it's i just pass the post data and get it but uh, it's good to see so you can see if it's a text field use this text field and an email you can sanitize the email and the text area once you have the sanitized um, strings you can well, get the email and send the email to the user as well. Hey, you contact us. Thanks. And also, you can send the email to the admin. Okay. So that's how uh, you can do. And let's go to the further section because I know some of you might be feeling, oh, this is pretty basic. I could have done it myself. Well, nice. Then let's see you can what uh, further you can go ahead uh, and do it. You can add more fields, like uh, you can add a radio box, check boxes, and all other stuff. And you can make the form multi step, step one, step two, and stuff. And you can also add a file upload, use the uh, whole convert this whole thing into a class. Um, so you can do that as well and split this into multiple files. Maybe you can have a, a validation in a separate file and, and things like that. And also, like the email notifications, uh, there's so many. There's other uh, possibilities are endless you can like, keep learning more so i see matt matt has a question uh he says will the expanded code with the data submission and rendering be added to the github repo now i know the answer to this so maybe lax maybe you want to go through what you've actually done with the repo and how you've set it up so that folks can yeah. see yeah sure um so i have one of my favorite educator like john uh him as well and there's another guy from react colby colby fire so he do the follow along commit thing so he's going to commit the data so you are going to follow along each commit but sometimes i make mistakes i do so many commits so i i thought of having branches so the idea is when you go to the uh, step one of it uh, let's let's do this way no, sorry this is a better approach sorry, it's not loading when you do the dot, it opens in the, doesn't work that way. Okay. Maybe you need to be logged in. Uh, so here you can see this is the up to the branch, uh, the step number six is, is measured up to this in the main. And you can uh, go ahead and see, let's say step eight and it has sanitization like that. So to so the chat answer, Matt is like, uh, all the code is there, just you can switch the branches. Yeah, I love I love how GitHub allows you to do this. It's one of my favorite things as well to have all these different branches for yeah. for coding repositories because then as you're showing now, folks can view the file and then just check the different branches and see the different steps. So that's very very yeah. cool. Matt uh, Matt says you're the man, Lax Marathon, and I agree. Uh, it's a great yeah. way to set up code examples for folks. So so well done, very much kudos on that. <laughs> yeah, and you can I, I added some references as well just in case if you uh, miss anything, you can you can do it. I mean, you can refer them. So the one thing, the one thing that I want to ask, and this is actually something that that uh, Lax and I were chatting about earlier, um, is that 
would anybody interested in a version two or a part two of this workshop? So I don't know what Lax would have uh, ready for us for part two, but uh, would anybody like like a follow-up workshop on this one? Uh, maybe in a few weeks or in a month's time, uh, maybe Lax can bring bring some other things for us. Yes, we've got Hugo says me, Matt says yes. Uh, we've already got Rico says yes. So we've already got a few folks. So, so there you go, Lax, people are ready to hear for more. Um, so definitely think about what your next one's gonna, gonna look like. What, what else do you want to share? Maybe you want to share some of the different steps that you've already prepared with us. Um, yeah, but it yes. sounds like it's a, Elliot says perhaps a block version. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah there's sure. definitely definitely options there for, for more content. So that would be very, very cool. I would love to see it. Um, so yeah, go ahead and start thinking about what, what part two could look like. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions uh, for Lux before... Before we, is there Lax? Is there anything else you want to share? You've got you've got five ten minutes left. Is there anything else you want to go over? Uh, yeah, let's go to the other step, maybe step seven. So we have some more idea. Uh, I don't know if that code is readable. Let me let, let me increase the font size. So let's close this one. So we can mm -hmm. you see here. This is another version of the same code. I've added the nonce field. It's just for verification if the is a legit form uh, or because you can emulate this one uh it's just a post request request right you can emulate or you can uh, somebody want to hack or some send us spam so you want to make sure uh knowns uh wordpress has this feature it's going to um, create a unique field for every submission so that way you will verifying whether it is valid and then you process the depth. So it will prevent this spam. And I'll recapture on other stuff as well in the future. Uh, yes, Elliot, I think he has a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I see Hugo has a question around. Oh, sorry, I saw Elliot, I saw your hand as well. I'll get to you in a second. Um, Hugo says, I have a SharePoint person that wants to get into WordPress. Where would be the best place to start? So, Hugo, I'll come back to you because I want to uh, chat up something about that. So, Elliot, let's go ahead with your question first. Uh, and then, Hugo, I'll come back to yours. Yeah, sure. Um, I just wondered, it's just out of interest, um, I actually used the WP action hook to check if if something had been submitted. Is there yeah. a performance, would there be a performance issue with that? Because obviously, I think that will fire on every page refresh. Or would it be better to actually, I know that this is done for simplicity, I just, it's just out of interest, really. Would you, I mean, if if I was doing a form perhaps like this, I might send it to a processing page or a form rather than firing it um, in, um, individually. But I do, I have seen code written like this all the time. Um, but for instance, if there was a, there could be another form submitted with that, with the same post key that's set, which therefore it could fire on somebody else's form unintentionally. So A, is there, is there a performance issue there? And the fact, well, there may be, unforeseen issues you know i.e a form might get submitted when it wasn't intended to be processed or second part of the question is is there a performance issue because it's loaded every time the page refreshes yeah so the, there are better hooks to use not the the wp hook is not the the, the right uh, uh stuff for this this is just for uh, like you said just for simplicity and just for uh, yeah. yeah yeah how it how it goes and stuff we can uh, have our own books as well we can have we can check and can do that way yeah okay cool uh, yeah that's fine I, I kind of thought that might be the case but i just have interest i'd ask yeah. the question anyway yeah okay. Okay. That, that would be for good for people who want to use this code on a production site it's like it's not intended thanks Elliot. it's, yeah. it's good Cool. cool. And then Hugo, to get back to your question, uh, the best place to start as far as beginner tutorials, I'm going to paste a link in the chat. It's learn.wordpress.org. Um, it's where we create all this content. Um, all these workshops are hosted there and planned there. Um, Lax is a member of the training team. I'm also a member of the training team. So we all work with uh, this Learn WordPress website. There are courses there for beginner users, beginner developers. We've got one for theme developers. We're busy working on one for plugin developers. There's one for intermediate users, for advanced users. So it's the one-stop shop. Uh, we even have 
So that's, that's another reason why I'm, I'm quite excited about your question. So LAX is in the process of preparing for what we call the next uh, Learn WordPress course cohort, where he will be taking a group of folks uh, through a six week uh, plan once a week they meet and he'll be taking them through a, a series of steps a little bit more in depth you know diving into some bit more details but a, a more of a planned progression um, and so if you want if your SharePoint person wants to get started with WordPress that's the place to go uh, and they will find uh, all kinds of learning uh, experiences at learn.wordpress.org so thank you for that question um, I think now would be a good time to just check if there are any more questions because we are five minutes to the hour and I want to just make sure that uh, Cynthia says sign me up. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. Um, so I just want to check if there are any other questions today before we start before we start wrapping up here. Um, while we do that, Lex, I want to say thank you very much to you for preparing all of this awesome code today. Um, yeah. And I, I recommend that you start planning your next workshop because it sounds like people want to see more. Um, yeah. Hugo says, how can we contact you both? So Lex, maybe you want to just share your your slides again with your um, with your online links. Um, yeah. And then I can share mine afterwards as well. Uh, yeah, I think I hope you, you are able to see the screen. Just is my name, Lex Mariupan, on all social media, mm -hmm. including Instagram everywhere. So uh, you can contact. And also, uh, please uh, come and join us in the official WordPress Slack. We are we, any questions, if there's no... Uh, right or wrong questions, you can ask anything about WordPress and you know, or if you have any other feedbacks as well, if you want to see more other different lessons and courses and other stuff as well. Absolutely. And I've just shared that 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 link in the in the chat, the WordPress Slack, you can find a chat.wordpress.org. Um Lax and I are very similar. You can find us online by our name. So my name is Jonathan Bossinger. Um, I am uh, Lax. I'm like you. I'm probably the only Jonathan Bossinger. You're probably the only yeah, Lax American. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you can just search for me, JonathanBossinger.com, or Twitter. I think I'm John underscore Bossinger. But if you go to my JonathanBossinger.com site, I'm there, and then everything else is linked through on that place. Um, so it's nice to meet somebody else who's also the only version of them uh, on on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks, folks. Thank you for joining. That was a really cool session. Thank you, Lax, for... Oh, spell it. My last one. Let me type it out. So it's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-B-O-S-S-E-N-G-E-R.com. Uh, there it is in the Slack. Um, and I think even if you spell it with the H and you spell my surname incorrectly, I think Google will still figure it out. Um, but there's the link if you need it. Um, Awesome. Lax, thank you so much for presenting today. This was a really great session. Thank you. Uh, it was really nice to be the person sitting behind on the other side for a change. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It was wonderful to, to meet you all. Please do keep an eye out on meetup.com or learn.wordpress.org for the next version of this, or at least part two of this workshop. Uh, we'll give Lax a few weeks to, to, to prepare, and then we'll set it up again. Looks like the time works and the day of the week works really, really well, so we'll probably stick to that. Um, but awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And thank you again, Lax, for, for what you shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.